Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today we're going to talk about the oldest game in all of game theory, The Prisoner's Dilemma, and something called the Strict Dominance Solution Concept. Now this is the very first thing I talk about in my textbook, Game Theory 101 The Basics. You can find a little bit more information about that in the description to this video, and you can find the book itself on Amazon. It's only a dollar. I highly suggest you check it out. That aside, let's get to this game and actually solve it. So the situation is something like this. Two suspects are arrested outside of a store. The police think that they were trying to rob the store, but they really only have enough evidence to prove that the suspects were trespassing. Thus, the police are going to need one of the criminals to rat the other one out in order to charge them for the greater crime of attempted robbery. And to get someone to confess, they're going to offer the suspects a deal simultaneously while they are sequestered in interrogation rooms. And the deal looks like this. If no one confesses to the robbery, the police can only really charge the prisoners with trespassing, and the punishment for that is one month in jail apiece. If one confesses and the other one does not, then the police will be lenient on the rat, essentially being thankful for his confession, and severely punish the one who remained quiet. And in this case, it's 12 months in jail for the one who kept quiet, and zero months in jail for the rat. So the one who confesses just basically gets to walk away. And finally, and this is also the rub, if both confess, then the police can punish both of them equally for attempted robbery, and that's going to be worse than just trespassing, so the punishment here is eight months in jail apiece. The question that we're interested in is as follows. Suppose the thieves only want to minimize the number of months they spend in jail. Should the, uh, should the suspects confess to the police? And the way we're going to try to solve this is by taking all of that information, which was a lot, I mean, if we look at this, there's a lot of text between all of these slides, and we want to condense all that information into something a little bit more manageable. And fortunately, game theory allows us to do this in a very nice way through something called strategic form, which is essentially a matrix that looks like this. Now, this has all of the information that I just said in all of the past few slides. So we have two players. We have a player one, player two, player one's in blue, player two is in red. Each of those players has two strategies. They can either keep quiet and not say anything to the police, or they can confess their crime to the police. And based off of what the players do, they end up at particular outcomes, which have particular payoffs associated with them. So if player one were to keep quiet, which gets us this row right here, and player two were to confess, which is this column right here, then they end up at this outcome right here, where player one spends 12 months in jail, so he gets minus 12 as his payoff, and player two gets no time in jail, so she gets zero months in jail. And you'll notice I just referred to player two as a, a woman there, as she. And the reason that I did that is because this is a very common norm to use in game theory. Whenever we're talking about player one, he's a man, and whenever we're talking about player two, she's a woman. The reason for that is precisely because of these pronouns. It allows us to use he, she, him, and her, which makes things a lot easier and a lot less annoying than me spending 10 minutes on a video constantly repeating player one and player two. You would grow tired of that very quickly. Trust me on it. So we're just going to always refer to player one as a man and player two as a woman. The colors here are going to be nice to keep, that, keep track of that. Player one is blue. He's the man. Player two is red. She is the woman. And just as another convention here in this seems reasonable here is that player one's payoffs always come first in these matrices, player two's payoffs always come second. It's easy in these videos because I have everything color coded, might be a little bit more difficult in text, but something to, to keep in mind should be pretty straightforward though, don't worry about that too much. Now, if we're actually interested in solving this game, this strategic form really comes in handy because it allows us to organize our thoughts very clearly. And the way we're going to solve this is by putting ourselves in the player's shoes. So. Imagine for a second that we're player one and we knew that player two was going to keep quiet. Let's think about what we should do optimally for, as player one. So our payoffs here are blue. We've just blocked out player two's payoffs because they don't really matter here. We're just thinking about what is best for us as player one. And we see that if player two is going to keep quiet, if we confess, then we spend no time in jail, zero months. And if we keep quiet, then we spend one month in jail, so we get a negative one here. Now this zero is greater than this negative one, so confessing is better than keeping quiet, which means that if player two were to keep quiet, then we as player one would want to confess. Okay, so we know that piece of information. Let's switch to the other way. Let's say player two was going to confess, and we knew that for sure as player one. What should we do? 
Well, if we keep quiet, we spend 12 months in prison, that's a negative 12. If we confess, we spend eight months in jail, that's negative eight. Negative eight is greater than negative 12. So that means if player two were to confess, we should confess as well and get here. But you'll notice there's something interesting there. Regardless of what player two chooses, it's better for us as player one to confess. And so what should we do? Well, we as player one should confess. And the reason for that is because of this strict dominance idea. So confess strictly dominates keep quiet for player one because confess gives player one a better payoff than keep quiet regardless of what player two does. Essentially, no matter what player two does, player one is always happier by confessing. And this shouldn't come as too much of a surprise given what we've just done. If we were to put ourselves in player two's shoes, we would see the exact same thing, that confess will strictly dominate keep quiet for her as well. Let's just run through this really quickly to confirm that. So suppose we are player two and we know that player one is going to keep quiet. So we're blocking out his payoffs. That's why they're black. And we're only focusing on player two's red payoffs here. So player one is going to keep quiet. If player two confesses, then she earns zero. If she keeps quiet, she earns negative one. Confessing is better than keeping quiet. So she would want to confess in that situation. And she would also want to confess if player one was going to confess because this negative eight is better than this negative 12. So again, regardless of what player one does, player two is always better off by confessing. And so we took this whole game right here and we've actually already found the solution. We know that both players are going to confess and they'll reach this outcome right here. Now, new people to game theory get a little bit confused here. They'll look at the keep quiet outcome where both players keep quiet and think to themselves, well, why can't we just get to this outcome? It's better for both players in this outcome. And they're right, it's actually better. Both guys here spend one month in jail and that's better for both of them than spending eight months in jail apiece. The problem is that this is an inherently unstable, unstable outcome. If we were to say maybe agree to playing these strategies before the prisoner or before the police threw us in jail, we wouldn't actually wanna follow through with those strategies once it was actually time to play. We know that if we were in this situation, we would be better off confessing in response to the other one keeping quiet, and so we would move to this outcome. But we know also that player two would want to confess in response to us confessing, and so we end up over here. So this outcome right here, this confess-confess outcome, is stable, and that's why we really like it. It's got this sense of stability that the other outcomes don't have, and so that's why we refer to the confess-confess outcome as the solution to this game. Now, strict dominance is a very important uh, concept to understand in game theory. And so if you don't have it down in this video, that's okay. The next video, which you can access by clicking on this box right down here, we'll talk about strict dominance in another context in something called iterated elimination of strictly dominated strategies. That's up next. And if you wanna click up in this box right here, this will subscribe to my channel. So you get all of my latest videos and all of my most up-to-date information. You can click on the top left box to access that. In the meantime, I hope this video has been helpful and I will see you next video. Thanks.